Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. Yes, my name is Didi. I wish you an amazing, beautiful Monday, guys, an amazing week you had. Bitcoin is at the moment at 42. 1500 ish dollars or something but who gives a fuck because we all know that the halving is upcoming a shitload of liquidity is coming into bitcoin we are going to go into a bull run so what does this short-term price volatility matter guys today again guys four amazing bitcoin charts yes a trading tip a travel tip of course some live advice and of course talking about the news the news very interesting today because we know now how much the cost of mining will be after the halving. That's a very, very interesting price level. So watch the video till the end if you want to know what the next level of support will be after we go into that beautiful bull run, guys. Now, let's quickly jump into the first part of the video. The charts, of course, to see what they have to say today. Bam. The first chart for today, guys, is this weekly chart. This is a weekly chart. And there's a weekly chart with normal candles. There's not hiking ashy candles, there's normal candles. If you want to know the difference, I just posted a beautiful article about that in the VIP group of the Bitcoin family, guys. But that weekly chart is showing a shooting star. It is not a perfect shooting star because it has a pretty big red body to be a shooting star, but it does look like a shooting star because we have a huge wick at the top. And these shooting stars, are not positive in Bitcoin. I will show you another chart uh, after this that will show you what happened at the last couple of shooting stars, guys. This is mostly a sign of a reversal of the market. And you can say now, yes, but we already dropped 20% from 49K to 41K. Yes, that is right. But a shooting star mostly takes a couple of weeks, which could mean that we, yes, go to that green line, that 38K level that I have there already for months on the chart, because that's the resistance that we have been fighting for a very long time. If you can see the left, that line was very important. And that is also the line that will be the support if we would drop. So that sure that shooting star could be an indication that we will drop indeed to the 38K level that everybody wants to see. But it not always happens because if a shitload of liquidity comes into the market, then yes, of course, could also pump up in price, guys. Let's quickly jump into the next few charts to show you exactly what I mean. This is the first one. Look, on this chart, we can see indeed on the top there of the buy bit uh, part that that is a shooting star forming on the weekly. We can now look to the bottom on the left. We can see that there also was a shooting star. And what happened after the shooting star, we first went up with two, three candles. So there was a couple of weeks bullish movements before we went down. Now that second example on the right bottom, also shooting star. After that shooting star, we went up, bup, bup, bup. You can see that clearly we went up for a couple of weeks, bam, then we went down. So now we again see the shooting star, which means we could go up for a couple of weeks, again try to break at 50k before we turn back into those 40k, maybe 38k levels. So be prepared that, that move could happen because of that shooting star. Let's jump into the next chart. The next chart is the RSI chart. You can see in a very simple way that we are not topping out yet. You know, on the left part of the chart, you can see those green hills on the bottom. That is when the RSI starts to top out. That is also when the bull market top is in. We are not even crossing the top dollar line yet. There is a lot of upward potential possible for the next two years, guys. So don't be fooled by all the news and all the fat that you see and read around you. We will go up after the halving and create a new bull market top probably in 2025. So give it time, zoom out. That is also what you see on this rainbow chart. It's very simple. You can see that we are just before the halving, around 90 days. Now, if we do what we normally do, we would go with that price after the blue halving line into that orange red area. And on this rainbow chart, that orange area is now between 145k and 186k. The light orange is between 113 and 145k. I believe that we minimally go to that light orange part between 130,000 and 145,000. If we repeat history, we could even go into the dark orange part, 180 to like even 240k. But if you look to the left on the chart, the first time we really had the dark red top, 
The second time, 2017, we went a little bit down below the dark red. The third time, 2021, we even didn't reach that dark red on the top. We only went to the dark orange part. So I believe that this time now, 2025, we will only reach that light orange top. Diminishing returns. That is what I believe, guys. So a very interesting chart, but still, I would be very happy with a price of 121,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. Then we have this chart. This chart is showing you that yes, the halving is happening in 90 days. Of course, we can see how beautifully after every halving, we went massively up. After the $12 point, we went up. After the $648 point, we went up. After the 8,572 point, we went massively up. And the halving in April, hopefully 20 April in 2024, because that's a really cool date, we will also go up. I believe we will be around 50K around the halving. Very beautiful chart. Then we can see on the Bitcoin daily chart that the RSI is bottoming out at that orange line level. Every time when that RSI hits that line, look to the left, completely in the left, we can see that the Bitcoin price is pumping up again. This is a daily chart, not weekly, daily. Again, the second time over there, after 9 October, it hit that line, bam, the Bitcoin price up. Now again, we hit that line, there will be reversal in that RSI, and then yes, of course, also the daily chart will reverse. That's why I say that shooting star on the weekly is very interesting, but it doesn't mean we can't go up for a couple of more days or a week or two before that shooting star will affect on the market and we'll see a sell-off again. Interesting chart. Now, but we have a very important chart, the Bitcoin halving regression. So we can see the halving levels here as well. You see the 12, the 670, the $8,400 level. At the moment, that halving level dollar line is 52,849. That's why I've always been saying, yes, we will reach that 50K level. And the halving level in the next bull cycle, so after the bear market of 2026-27, is 218,000 US dollar. And the halving level after that again, we are talking 2032, is 688,000 US dollar. So, if these lines and the calculation of these lines, the logarithmic non-linear regressing, you see the formula on the chart, it's just a formula calculating these levels if these are right every time. So let's see if we will be around 52K this halving, then we have been right four times. So from April 2024, it's four points on the chart that show you that that mathematical calculation is right. Now then there is a huge probability that that fifth time is also gonna be right. And that will be in, of course, 2028. And that will be a level of 218,000 US dollar for that next halving. And then 688 in 2032, four years later again. So if these are the future halving levels, why the fuck would you even think about selling at this halving level around 50K? That is how you zoom out into the charts, guys. Very important and interesting chart. Then I have one more chart. And it's not a chart, it's more a table with information to share with you. If you now look at the whole figures on a daily basis, the spot ETF and everything, then we can see daily Bitcoin issuance at the moment is 900 BTC. This is going to be 450 BTC from April 2024. Now, BlackRock's Bitcoin acquisition in the first two days was 11,500 BTC. So if you look to the daily issuance of the supply by BlackRock's purchase, that's like 13 days. So daily Bitcoin consumption by ETFs would be 23,000 Bitcoins. The net daily reduction in Bitcoin supply is around 22,100 BTC. So if you look to the total available Bitcoin on exchanges, 1.8 million BTC, we have 52 weeks, every working week has five days, so we have around 10 holiday days on average per year. So you can see that the days to exhaust the Bitcoin and exchanges because of the daily reduction and everything would be 81.4 days. That is very interesting to see that at the moment because of the spot ETF demand, the consumption by ETFs in total is 22,100 Bitcoins. There is only 900 Bitcoins being created every day. And from April, it's only gonna be 450 Bitcoins being created every day. The supply is not enough for the demand that we are seeing 
because of the normal market, but also because of the spot ETF market. And when there is a supply shock, there is always a massive increase in price. And I believe that is exactly what we are going to see in the next upcoming months, a massive increase in the Bitcoin price. I hope you really enjoy the charts. Yes, cool charts. Again, showing you where the resistance is, showing you where the support is. You know, it's very interesting to see these levels, but I will come back to that later, guys. Also, of course, always, like always, zoom out in Bitcoin. Look at that bigger picture, guys. It is not important what the daily volatility does if you're not a day trader. If you're an investor that just wants to play the long-term game, then also have those long-term emotions. Zoom out. Enjoy that beautiful volatility that you see in the daily chart, but look at the monthly chart and see that we're only going up. It's very interesting to always analyze people's emotions because they're always like, ah, oh, we are gonna go up, oh, we're gonna go down. While they know it's a long-term play. The bull market top will be in 2025. Why are you stressing about the daily close or the four-hour close? Doesn't matter. You will stay in this game till we reach near the top and we start the dollar cost average out. Very simple. Now, let's quickly jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for the day, guys, is a very important one because a lot of people ask me, Didi, when I'm in loss, should I sell my position or should I stick to my position? Now, in crypto, it's very important to understand that you, some you win, some you lose. It's very simple. An investor doesn't only win. But to try to optimize the winnings, you should be dollar cost averaging. So for example, you bought like a token or 10 tokens at $1. Now you invested $10 at that moment. Now that token drops to 50 cents. So you lost $5 of your investment. There's two things you can do. You can say one, okay, I will take my $5 loss and continue and invest in another one. Or two, I really believe in the team I really believe in the token, the utility and everything else. What do I do? I buy $10 extra. So you buy $10 extra at 50 cents each. So now you bought 10 tokens for $1, you bought 20 tokens for 50 cents. In total, you have 30 tokens. Your investment in total was $20. So then you start to divide $20 by 30 tokens. Then you understand how much you paid per token. So then it's around 70 cents. When that token is at 50 cents, it only needs to go up to 70 cents to make profit because your dollar cost average, your buying level. So your buying level was $1. You brought it down to 70 cents by buying extra. And if the token drops more, you buy a little bit more to bring down your purchasing price, your average purchasing price, a little bit more down as well. And then when the token bounces, it doesn't need to bounce to $1 or 70 cents, but maybe even only to 50 cents for you being able to take profit. But you only do this when you really believe in the project, in the long-term vision, in the team, in the tokenomics and everything else. If it's a pump and dump token or a meme token, don't do that shit. Just take your loss and move on to the next part. Some you win, some you lose. That is the trading tip for today. The travel tip for the day is take your time. Please slow down. Don't travel like a lunatic through a country in one week. It is impossible to see Thailand in one week. It is even impossible to see, for example, the Netherlands in one week. Take your time. Do plan a trip for a couple of weeks or months. If you want to discover Thailand, at least 30 days. If you just want to hang out on the islands and have the island vibe, okay, two weeks is enough. But if you want to see the north and the south and the middle, then a month is the minimum you need for Thailand. I think you even need a month for the Netherlands if you want to see all the beautiful provinces and all the beautiful areas in the Netherlands. So it's very important, guys, to slow down and take your time. That's the only way you will truly enjoy your trip. You won't enjoy your trip if you're going like two days, two days there, two days there, one day there, two days there, one day there, three days beach, finish. You will get back home even more tired. That's not how it works. Slow down and take it easy. And I know that's very difficult because you're probably running the hamster wheel with like 200 miles an hour. But now, when you come to Thailand, at least plan 30 days, slow down, get into the Thai vibe and chill. 
<laughs> so my travel tip for the day is don't plan too much in two less days guys make it a beautiful trip by slowing down and enjoying a country to the fullest by giving it time it's even important to give yourself a little bit of time to get adjusted to this new time zone to this new culture so please don't plan everything like too tight in a couple of days not nice okay that was the travel tip for today let's jump into the next part The next part is answering a question from one of the followers. The question is over here. Didi, I am a long-term holder in Bitcoin, but still I want to take some profits now and then. What should I do? So to be very clear, if you want to take some profits now and then, so you would have taken profits now at, for example, 48, 49K, and you're buying the dip now around 42K. That is the game that you can play. For me, the best strategy to play that game is to look at the long-term Fibonacci levels. So you remember that video I made this week? I told you guys, listen, in the monthly chart, we have seen four green candles. We are running now into this resistance line of the 0.618 Fibonacci level. That is a very important level where a lot of people take profit. And when a lot of people take profit, we will see a dump in the price. So if you want to play that game, then play that game according to the Fibonacci levels, for example. You need to find your own strategy, but for me, that has always been a very stable strategy because these Fibonacci levels, they are there for a reason. People have been using them for decades because of a reason, because they work. So if you look on the weekly or on the daily and you see this huge level of resistance that is in line with one of the Fibonacci levels, then you need to understand that we will have a lot of resistance and we will be dropping in price a little bit. We don't know how much, but mostly in these bull markets, when we go up like this, like almost 200%, a 10% or 20% crash is a normal thing to do. That's a healthy correction of the market to pick up new, fresh liquidity at these lowest levels. Just see it like you convincing your friends to get into Bitcoin, guys. Come on, get in at 50K, get in at 50K. No, 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 that level is too high. I want to get in at 40K. And all those other friends also want to get in at 40K, guys. So then you know already, ah, to get new liquidity into this market, we need to drop a little bit to pick up my friends over there at that 40K level. And that is mostly what happens. And mostly this happens at these Fibonacci levels. We can find exactly where most people will take profit. That is where you sell. And then you will also see on the Fibonacci levels where most people have their buy orders, probably have their buy orders, and that's where you put your buy orders and you buy back. So if you want to play that game, one, you need to make time to play the game. You cannot have a full-time job and play that game at the same time because you will lose. You will be selling too early and you will be buying too late and maybe even buying back more expensive. You really need to be able to focus on this. And two, I would use the resistance levels or the Fibonacci levels um, on the weekly or the monthly chart to determine those long-term swings, okay? So for now, I think this one is over. You can buy back at 42K, maybe even a wick to 38K. But from there, again, we are going to go massively up in another pump, maybe even to 80K. And then at that 80K level, probably there will be the next possibility Look at the Fibonacci levels at that moment to buy back around 70 or 60k. So that's how you play that mid-term play if you want to multiply your Bitcoins during the bull market. That was the answer on the question of one of the followers. The news for today, guys, is about the miners. Because CoinShares just published an article where they have calculated what the new cost of mining will be for the miners after the halving. And the halving is probably gonna take place on the 19th of April. I hope it is gonna be the 20th of April because that's just a really cool date. 24, 2024. So yeah, that's just me. <laughs> so hopefully it's the 20th of April. But at that moment, um, the, the halving is taking place. So from 6.25 uh, Bitcoins a block, we will drop to 3.125 bitcoins a block that can be mined by the miners so these miners they always calculate what is the cost of mining one bitcoin because they need to know and understand how much their costs are to mine those bitcoins and they also understand okay we can make or mine so many bitcoins so yes we need to be able to break even with those costs 
And mostly what happens is that the Bitcoin price needs to double almost during the halving to be able for those miners to break even with their cost. Now, CoinShares now just calculated how much the cost of mining would be per Bitcoin after the halving. So the cost to mine one Bitcoin is 37,680 US dollar. And the biggest part of those costs, 60 to 70%, is of course electricity. They can't influence the electricity bill because they will need to pay the electricity. They can influence the rest, but most miners don't want to um, sack off people or you know, minimize spendings on other stuff that they really already need to spend. So what they will do is they will make sure that the market dries up, that there is not enough supply anymore to the market, which will push the price up all the way to those levels that they will be profitable again. And that level should be above 37,000 US dollar. So there's now 680 US dollar. And then after that halving, from that moment, that will be the cost of mining, that will be the cost of mining one Bitcoin. That is why I'm saying, I believe that around the halving, we will be already around the 50K because then the miners are profitable. And there is three miners that have a pretty good position if you compare them to the other miners. You can see it here in this image. I think it's Riot, Terra, and another one. The first three on the left part of the chart, they have the lowest cost of mining. Everything to the right part of the chart have the highest cost of mining. So if the Bitcoin price is not gonna increase tremendously, those miners at the right part of the chart, they will be mining, but making losses while doing so and that can never take too long because then they won't survive. It's very simple. That's how every business works and that's also how it works with mining, guys. If you're mining something, but the revenue is not enough to break even with your cost, you're in loss. And if you're in loss too long time, then you will dry up. Your liquidity will dry up, you will run out of money, you will be needing to close the doors. That's how it works. So if that Bitcoin price doesn't go up above that 37K level, let's say 38k level, then those small miners, after a couple of months, need to close the doors. The big miners, they still have some reserves and they can eat up the reserves for some time. But also they will make sure, hey, listen, community, if you are selling too much Bitcoins, we are not gonna put those Bitcoins on the market anymore. Okay, we will wait, we have reserves, we will mine a shell of Bitcoins and we will keep them. So the supply is drying up, the demand is continuously growing and because BlackRock and all those, they need to buy Bitcoins. And then what happens is, bam, the price goes up. And then when the price goes up to that new all the mine, then the miners will come with their reserves in the Bitcoins that they mine and they will start to dump those on the market to take their profits again. That's the game the miners play. It always has been the same, guys. So that was the news for the day. Let's jump into the last part of the video, the life lesson. The life lesson for today, guys, is a quote that has been on our website for many years. It's a quote I have been using since the beginning that we escaped that hamster wheel, that we escaped that system. The secret of happiness is freedom. The secret of freedom is courage. And that's exactly what the most people lack. They lack courage. And you need a shitload of courage to take those steps that we, for example, took as a family. But that will exactly lead to that freedom and that happiness that everyone is searching for. So it's very important for people to understand that the secret of happiness is freedom and the secret of freedom is courage. It's not difficult. You just need to gain the courage to change your life in a way that you want to change your life. And then when you change your life in a way that you want to change your life, that happiness will come by itself. And mostly that is because you get a certain amount of freedom in your life. Because that's what everyone is longing for. Freedom, freedom, freedom. But you need to have courage to reach that freedom state of mind. And freedom is not only in materialistic stuff, guys. Freedom is already in not needing to run that hamster wheel 24 seven anymore you will experience a shitload of freedom between your ears because of that. It's not just having beautiful money to go on travel and to do crazy stuff. It is just being able, you, to focus on you. 
And you need to start focusing on yourself, but you don't have the time to do that because you're running that hamster wheel continuously. And if you want to escape that part and just take it easy, slow down in life, being able to focus on yourself, being able to really stop and think about life, what is really important to you, what is really important to your family, what are the real important values you want to give your kids, do you really believe that you can give those values by sending those gifts into schools that will brainwash them? Or do you think, nah, maybe I should spend a little bit more time with my children on the beach in Thailand to educate them about the real values of life, norms and values? All those questions need to be answered for you to get this freedom state of mind that will give you that happiness feeling that you're searching for. But that's my honest opinion, guys. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not like a doctor. I'm not anything like that. But that's just me talking out of experience in the last seven, eight years of traveling now. Because I found out that even when I make a shitload of Bitcoins, it's not changing my state of happiness. It's changing my possibilities. Yes, I can eat in the fancy restaurant. Yes, I can uh, pay some dinners for my friends. Yes, I can pop some bottles and share them with people. But that brings them happiness. That doesn't bring me the happiness. A little bit, a little bit, of course. You know, I'm always happy when other people are happy, but the most important thing during those eight years of traveling that I found out is that to become happy myself, I should focus a little bit more on myself. I should visualize the future that I want to see. I should manifest this. I should believe it, feel it, dream it. And that's, I think, the secret for a person to become happy. You can even fool the brain. It's very simple. Look, the moment you're really happy in life, for example, if you're walking on the beach, you hear the sound of the waves, you hear some birds, maybe that will give you that ultimate happiness feeling. But the brain does not know if that is real or not. Like my brain is now feeling this adrenaline of speaking, of the beach, of the sounds, of the boobs and butts and everything else and I'm feeling happy and my brain understands that and he's like wow he's feeling happy like this. We are programming now that this guy feels happy uh, when he surrounds himself in this situation. But the cool part is now you don't need to be here to fool your brain that you have that happiness within you now. You can just visualize it. Close your eyes, pretend to hear the waves, pretend to hear those sounds, pretend to be walking next to me on the beach, pretend to see what my eyes see, all those beautiful Bitcoin beach babes and everything, and just think it and feel it. And then your brain starts to believe it because your brain doesn't see the difference between, yeah, it's happening real or it's fantasizing about it. And the more you start to fantasize about it and visualize about it and really feel, try to feel that happiness, of that moment that you're walking the beach, smelling the air and all that stuff, the moment you do it more and more and more, the brain starts to believe that that is your normal state of mind. And probably then the law of attraction will lead into you creating that situation in real life as well. I really believe it works like this. Just convince yourself of whatever it is that you want to achieve and you will achieve it at the end. It will take some time, sometimes a couple of weeks, sometimes a couple of months, man, it can even take a year if you need to practice that visualizing and manifesting, but it will happen. So every time when I make a video, just close your eyes and pretend that you're walking next to me and visualize, hey, I am walking on the beach, I'm enjoying the sound of the waves, I'm enjoying the birds, I'm enjoying everything that I can see, I smell even the salt or whatever it is, or the shit of the dogs on the beach, whatever you prefer. And yes, I will be there. I will be there in the future, together with Didi walking the beach, talking about Bitcoin, blockchain and life. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about everything else? Also about the live advice, of course. Thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing Monday, an amazing week. But probably we will see each other again tomorrow, Tuesday, on the same beach. Bam!